and then we go into the game and I see like the big head skin so I was like oh I'm gonna pick this big head skin <laughs> and I just run run at uh, an enemy with the big head and I'm just like oh look at me guys my <laughs> my head is so big <laughs> Hey guys, it's Caps here, and today I'll be watching and ranking some of my best plays that you guys, the fans, have sent in. So uh, let's get right into it. Can Perks do the same? He does have vision that Hillsang is in the oh, area for a dive man. Fnatic, they want to go mid, not bot. All right, no flash available. Caps is going to need to find some sort of stun or ultimate. He actually just gets chunked out. Oh, oh, Caps. Take a look at that! The hex oh, is And Caps turns it around! Oh, so this this clip comes from uh, quite a crazy series from us. Uh, we were 0-2 down against Fnatic, playing, playing for our lives, right? Uh, although we were in the upper bracket. But they were putting a lot of focus on me this game. <laughs> and Brox are coming in behind me again for like, I think, the second or third gank this game. And I think by then I was kind of getting used to how they were they were throwing around their skills just right. Uh, so I was kind of low-key expecting Gragas to come for me. Uh, and him showing up, luckily I managed to clear out the wave. And it was just like juking towards Corky, right? Trying to dodge as many of his skill shots because it's very hard to dodge Gregor's ult. So the kind of the only thing I can hope for is just like uh, outranging it. Because if I move up here, where's up here, like I, there's just like it's too hard to dodge. But if I move down, like I will at least make sure Gregor's can't hit anything on me. Um, it does make me like very vulnerable to Corky. But luckily he misses or I dodge, right? As we can say, like the Q and the ults. And if any of it hit me, I was probably gonna die, but everything just ended up missing. I ended up hitting my skill shots, and it, it was for sure a crucial, crucial moment in, in this playoffs. <laughs> and let's see, so for the tier list, I mean, it was for sure quite a good clip. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it all the way in, in clap, so I'm just gonna put it in S. I think, I mean, I was quite happy with how the situation was. I think it was definitely one of the, the more hype moments. But at the same time, it, I think it also came from maybe a lot of mistakes on their part because I, again it's always like a mix of like did they miss it or did i hit the, did i dodge it right and it's always like a balance mm, i think i think i will put it in s let's let's go easy we can't start out with claps right from the beginning maybe we'll have to leave some room for <laughs> for some future plays Reckless is there, Broxer, Hillisang and Soes joining them now, Caps on his way, Misfits, four man strong, pushing for the in hit, Brox is the one to step forward, Alfari will tank it up for the moment, here comes Caps, getting on to Alfari, oh, oh. with the three man knock up, Hero's entrance comes in, another three man, Caps, Caps, kills and Summer, and that is exactly what you want from your main man in a fight like this, Caps comes up huge, what an amazing performance from Fnatic. So this series uh, against Misfits, it was our what was our fourth our fourth playoffs, and going into the series we were quite confident. But Misfits actually came out with a very strong showing game one, and while we made a comeback in game two, game three was like kind of the the game to to, to determine the momentum of the series, right? And <laughs> and it was a very crucial game for us, and we were all quite nervous going into it, which is why when they picked the perfect <laughs> draft to, to play Vayne mid against, I was really hyped to play it, but at the same time, understandably so, like some of my teammates, especially Dylan, was very worried about like our future, right? Because it was a very crucial game, like the, as I mentioned, the momentum in like a game three is, is super clutch when it's like 1-1. So I was super nervous going into the game, right? Because I, I really had to like prove the pick, so to say, and uh, I knew, I, I felt like I, that it was good, but I also had to show, I guess, the rest of my team and the rest of the world for, for, for that matter, right? Uh, and it was really not a good showing for me. At least, like, the early game was very, very bad. <laughs> I made a big mistake at, like, level 5, and then I just kind of played it yeah, very poorly the whole game. I think I was uh, very nervous. But it all turned around in this moment when they go for the inhibitor and Miki gets like a, a good knock onto me and they go really deep onto me. But Hansawa makes like the crucial mistake of like jumping into my vein when I can like use my E, right? Uh, and that just turns around the whole game. Suddenly we, I think we get like what, three or four kills. Um, we end up getting Nash afterwards as well. And suddenly the game just feels completely, like not even just winnable, it actually just feels like it's won. So it, it was, it was a very, very like game like a career changing moment if anything because if we lose this game who knows what how the confidence will be how the the mood will be in the team right but i think these kind of moments are, are, are what makes league so great now i have miki and hans on my team <laughs> maybe we will uh, maybe we'll get some 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 comeback of the vein <laughs> so let's see i mean i think in terms of in terms of a hype i think it just has to be like claps i think it's probably like the most hype moment i've had in my life uh like yeah actually just not even just like my league but just actually in my life i think after this game i was like i think the adrenaline was pumping so much i couldn't actually stand still i was like just 
<laughs> moving like crazy because it it just it was so important for to win this game. As I mentioned, right, it was like a very important game for us. We were semifinals. If we lose, we're out. Um, we might not even make worlds at that point. Uh, and I was really <laughs> confident in my vein. And obviously, like some of my teammates and like uh, my staff were like not sure about it because it was not something we had practiced a lot. So when I pick the vein in such a moment, there's a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. And I think I was feeling like too, like maybe I took too much responsibility in the sense that I was like a bit, like I was very nervous at the time, but it it luckily worked out. <laughs> and in that moment I could, instead of going to <laughs> backstage all sad and Dylan like yelling at me, probably I can instead go on and, and laugh at him and be like, haha, I told you so. <laughs> so so it, it was it was probably the most hype, hype moment of, of my league career so far. I mean, we tried so much crazy stuff from like lane swapping to playing. Uh, I mean, we even played Funnel after the Funnel got nerfed, right? Even on G2. Uh, I think, like, overall, there's just been so many crazy things. I really like the, the Draven with the big head because of the story behind it as well. Like, it was like right when Dylan joined, actually. It was like our first scrim block with Dylan. And back then I was, what, 17, I think, and Dylan just joined our team. And the first things he, he sees is just, my sleep schedule was completely destroyed. I was just like lying sleeping when he, he came in the middle of the day because I was just like napping because I was playing solo queue all night. Uh, so I was taking a nap in the middle of the day. He just comes and he wakes me up. And then he's like, oh, we're scrimming now. And hello, I'm your new coach. And I'm like, hello. And then we go into scrim. And then he picks Lucian blind mid lane. And I was like, okay, this has to get punished. So I I was like, oh, we have to play Draven mid. And, <laughs> and Dylan like just joining the team is like, he of course trusts his players. And I just log in Draven mid. And, <laughs> and then we go into the game and I see like the big head skin. So I was like, oh, I'm going to pick this big head skin. <laughs> and I just run run at uh, an enemy with the big head. And I'm just like, oh, look at me, guys. My, <laughs> my head is so big. <laughs> uh, and I just play super aggressive. And it was going pretty well. But then an enemy made his one health and I flash auto tag him. Oh, but I didn't auto tag him. I auto tag the turret instead. I misclicked and then I just end up dying. And instead of getting a kill, I just die and I just start dying and dying more and more and more. <laughs> and I think this is like the first game I played with Dylan was just <laughs> completely ending with the <laughs> the big head on, on Draven. So it, it was a <laughs> it was quite the start to to our relationship with me and Dylan. <laughs> And now with this uh, Red Bull Baron power play, G2 continue to take down at structures. Solar Flare is going to hit on towards the back line. That's Perks caught out, but you can see Life almost down before you can even get out of the fight. Ignite ticking on caps, use it the stopwatch to dodge the spear. He's going to come back up and with the ammo, oh my god! Oh, that is disgusting! That is the most illegal ammo I have ever seen. Clint dives in, Rascal dives in, but they're already done, and Caps is still alive, and he's almost back up to full HP. Ruler, the last man standing, and what a fated end it is for Genji as he goes down. Another triple for Caps. Yeah, so I think in this series, uh, we were obviously at Worlds, right? And there was a long, like a lot of teams to beat. And we start off with Genji, who was looking quite strong, and especially their, their early games were, were quite deadly. Uh, and even in the like in this series itself, we were like quite behind in some of the early games, but we managed to to make some comebacks. Um, and now in the second game, we were actually like at this point we were we had already made the comeback, but this kind of like solidified like not only the game but the series in itself, right? Because <laughs> they thought they could make their their own version of a comeback because I get very chunked out in the beginning. Uh, they managed to land us some a lot of CC on me. They used like Ash Arrow and stuff, and I'm down to one health. So they would probably expect us to back out. Maybe they can hope to to kill me even. But suddenly I just turn around and with the help of like Silas healing, Hourglass, Tom Kench eating me as well, uh, and uh, I guess even like Shen W and stuff like that, we just managed to just finish the game here. And th that's like it's just, it's like a statement win, you know, because. That's not gonna, they're not gonna have time to, to, to farm. We're not gonna wait for next Drake. We just ended right here. <laughs> and we do it out the back of a lot of one shots. I think Silas back then was, <laughs> he looks very strong in this clip. <laughs> I wish I could do the same damage nowadays. Uh, <laughs> especially this arrow, it hits really hard. Uh, but but yeah, this this was for sure a fun world. Not not with the ending we had hoped for, but at least so far it was, it was a, lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> so I, one thing I'm afraid to put the Silas clip, I think it was it was for sure like it was for sure a pretty good clip, but also I was very fat at the clip. Um, but then again, it was at Worlds, so I'm leaning more towards like a, like the hype was also there. I mean, I think I will just put it at A. Honestly, I think that the like the clip looks really crazy, and it was also very crazy, right? It was a very risky play, especially because of the lead, if anything. But at the same time, I was also very far ahead, and I was doing a lot of damage. <laughs> uh, and Silas looked completely broken on this patch, so <laughs> so I, I will just put him at A, I think. I think that's fair.
G2 Esports with Baron empowered. They haven't backed away yet. Spinning axes will connect, and the teleport now being channeled by Khan. Unstoppable onslaught's not available, but it might not be needed. That's an interrupt. Devastating charge delivers Perks into the back line. There goes Faker, chasing down the Perks. Perks stays alive for now. Can't find the next axe. All of a sudden, though, it's a one for one. Support for AD. Yankos, as well as Caps, get themselves a reply back. Now Caps turns his attention to Khan. Faker's running low. He needs to get some reach. Whoa! He is popped by Caps. Caps is throwing out every single ability and turning his attention to Khan. It's a quadra kill for Caps and G2. 12,000 gold advantage is a dark binding from Mickey. Should just about seal the deal. Caps goes all the way to the steps of the fountain for a penta kill as G2 equalized the series at one to one. You know, we a lot of these clips, we are, we are just trying to, to end as fast as possible. That was a lot of what we wanted to do back then. So just fight, fight, fight. And SKT was, was matching us, right? They have the TP flank coming in, in on us. And they actually want to wanna take the fight before we just like siege down the, the turret with, with Nash. Um, so it was looking a bit scary for a second there because they get like, I guess, a lot of damage onto perks. They managed to kill him as well. But while they're killing perks, I am just killing their backline. <laughs> it, it seems like it's not the, the nicest meta to be like a, an AD carry because <laughs> there's a Silas one-shotting one AD carry, there's a Kali one-shotting the other AD carry, and then it's just about who wins out in the end. And luckily I was a bit stronger here, uh, and I also was a bit healthier. So I end up beating the Silas. We end up killing the, the Hacker as well with a bit of help from, from Miki and Jankos, uh, and then it luckily doesn't hide in the Nexus. He actually comes to try and defend, which is nice because then I <laughs> I actually get to go get a pentacle. <laughs> and for sure getting a pentacle against Faker, <laughs> that is like that is in my list of things to do, you know, in my life. There might be winning worlds and there, another one might just be getting a pencil against Faker. So let's see. I'm not actually sure where to put this one exactly. Uh, I think I, I'm definitely not feeling like I don't think it was quite as like I'm not feeling as was not as hyped as, as the vein clip. I think um, obviously, part of it being that we were still 1-1, so there was still a long series to get to go against T1. Um, and you can really just can't take it easy against T1, you have to just <laughs> keep your head in the game. So I don't even know I don't even know how hyped I was actually after this. I was for sure happy, but I was I think it's more focused than anything. So it, it I don't know if I it, if it like really had the the hype for me to bring it up to the next level. But I'm definitely looking between S and A. Um, and I I think I will probably put it at S. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll put it in front or behind. I think I'll put it behind actually, uh, just because I I really like dodging skill shots and this was like <laughs> just a lot of the oh, dodging skill shots. So I will put the the Akali clip behind it. But for sure, I mean any any highlight against Faker also just gets like extra bonus points, right? So <laughs> so uh, yeah, I will I will put it there. For sure, I mean, for sure, I'm, I think winning against him is, it feels good. I think the, when he was in EU, right, I of course had to, <laughs> I had to PM him and write some all chat to him uh, because, like, I get to play against Faker, right? I had to at least write something to him, uh, and he he noticed me in that solo game and he punished me for it as well. Uh, so I got to get a little bit of revenge. <laughs> Location, Smithy, trying to hide away. They still don't have the cooldown on Sindra's ult back up. They might try for the attempt right here if you can find the QE. Nice juke by Kath, but will be hit a little bit. Nice double sun comes in, ult comes in as well. He's got a lot of a playground to play around with. They find that first stun, they find some damage, but Ignite means he will get the solo kill the 1v2. And Caps tries it for Jensen, and here comes Mickey! Oh, so this is the final, of course, and uh, we were 2-0 we were up, right, in the final against Team Liquid, and we were very confident going up against Team Liquid as well. Uh, so we were definitely feeling it a bit, and we were trying to uh, <laughs> we were playing more aggressive than usual, you know, trying to like really like end it right here. Uh, and in this clip as well, I was just walking very aggressively up, even though uh, we I didn't really have any vision. Of course, like Miki was slowly moving, making his way to mid, so I had like a bit of backup. Uh, but he was still like very far away. At the beginning. Actually, he's just bot at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I felt I felt confident with my mercs. It gives a lot of moon speed. I can dodge a lot of their spells, and also just the match distance is, is quite clutch against uh, Syndra. <laughs> so this one was was definitely nice. And yeah, I mean, when when this happened, it just felt like this series is over. You know, we got this. Uh, I think we end up making it like the fastest final ever internationally, or maybe even the fastest series internationally ever. Um, so it was definitely <laughs> definitely a cool series. Uh, the biggest achievement I've accomplished so far uh, as well.
Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not just like specifically the play, but like winning the, the final, right? Which which comes off of plays like this. So uh, definitely, definitely an important uh, moment in my career and something that I, I'm happy that I, I managed to accomplish. Now, in terms of ranking, um, it's a bit harder. I think, um, like as I mentioned, it is for sure like the biggest accomplishment, right? Like in winning the series. And I think the, the play for sure like ended it like that. But I still think I might put it like a little bit lower. I think I'll still put it a little bit lower just because uh, of like the like the, just because of how we were in the series. Like we were two zero up. I think a lot of the other plays, like for some as mentioned, like here we are one one. Here we were one two. Here we were uh, zero one. Uh, and this one we were one zero, right? But I think like when the play matters, uh, it matters a lot for me as well because when we were two zero up, of course we're gonna play a little bit more aggressive, right? We're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna have, we're gonna naturally have more confidence just because there's like your your face is not to the wall, right? Like your back is not to the wall. You're you have a bit of, of playroom to like uh, to go with, um, and I think that helped me a lot in this play, right? <laughs> playing playing super aggressive against them, uh, and but I think the the most high plays for me are always like when the game matters the most, you know, or when the or even when you're down, like a zero two down, and then coming with some some cool plays and or making it back in a series. I think that that is like that is the dream for me, <laughs> and that's also when the pressure is highest. So I think that's that's probably like what what I would put it. Elder Dragon takes him out. He dies so so quickly. Oh. Tempest fate by time. He's on the Nexus. What's the Nexus? Starting to go low. There the Dallas pushing in. Ah, caps. Oh. Yes. No, no caps. He bounces. They almost got the kill. It's not enough, Mad Lions. They turn it around. Oh my oh. god. Oh no. Yeah, I mean this this series uh, was. Yeah, was was our first BU5 loss, I guess, in Europe. In this specific moment, we kind of managed to find like a good angle for for backdooring. Uh, I don't remember exactly what they were doing, but it looks like they were going towards Nash at the beginning, uh, where we then like six TP in. Right, Bard has, I think, he ran all the way here to put a wall so I could TP, and they match with Sundar TP, and the rest start basing. And right now, I was like really just praying and hoping we could actually end it, right? Um, and while Mickey slows down Syndra, I'm just trying to get as many passive procs as possible because I mean obviously six passive does more damage to to the the turrets, right? So I was trying to proc my passive as much as possible. And specifically now, I know everyone means that I tried to settle charge the Nexus, but I actually was trying to dodge away from the Syndra QE because Syndra QE is here, right? So I like she shoot QE. So I W to to dodge the the QE uh, and get my last auto off. But right as I start flying, wait, I can see if I can see it. Like right as I start flying. Set comes out of base right now, and now I'm like, oh no, I should have, if I, like, yeah, if I thought about that, I should have set the charts, like, upwards here, I think. If I jumped, like, this way, I could probably get an order off before Set uh, gets uh, a CC on me. But instead, I jump here, and I, he cancels my auto with his E. I mean, even though the animation is actually enough, but it, he cancels my auto, and I try to get a stopwatch, but I insta-die as I come out, and I can't get my auto off. And now we end up not ending the game, and we even end up losing, but definitely not the, <laughs> the, the, the best moment of my life. I think this one is just going straight to crabs. We won the split, that's all I'd say. It was quite a journey playing AD carry. I've actually mentioned it before, but I think AD carry, like winning AD uh, playoffs on AD carry was like probably my favorite like playoffs uh, and my favorite playoffs win, which sounds crazy even though it was online because playing AD carry was just like, <laughs> it felt very, uh, it felt very uncomfortable for me. It was not really, definitely not something that I enjoyed, uh, but I really think that in playoffs my whole team like not just for me but also my whole team really really went together to try and make it work and i thought that was really beautiful and i really enjoyed that uh, feeling of everyone like like it felt like everyone was trying 200 percent to win the split because we knew it was not it was not gonna be easy uh and we ended up i think just playing a lot of like super peel supports i think miki was playing a lot of Janna, playing yumi and it felt insane to play adk with that as well right because i <laughs> i was like uh exodia just one-shotting everyone uh with the the buffs so it was a fun split no uh, regardless of this moment we, do, we don't look at this moment thank you so much for sending these plays over let me know how i did in the comments and see you guys all later <laughs>